it's a little boring typing things to the screen. And that's all we can do right now. All we can do is just type things, just print things to the screen here. We can't really type or do anything, we can only read it. But what if we want to interact with our program? Like type in values or do something. That's pretty significant here. You know, we really can't do anything. We can type here, but nothing happens. If we press enter, the program just terminates here. Without warning, the program terminates. That's, that could be kind of frustrating if the program you know, just terminates without even letting you know it's going to happen. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to copy this here and use it for later here. Okay, so let's just say we have our one variable here. Let's say we said um, enter a number, enter a enter an integer. I'm going to say okay. Then the next statement. So we already know about the C out statement. Console output, and we got the insertion operator. I'm just going to insert this to the screen here. Now, right here, we're going to learn a new command. It's called the console input here. Console input stands for, you know, CIN stands for console input. Just as this stands for console output. Console out and end. So, just to give you a little hint here, see this I and the O here in this piece here? That's what stands for input output. Input output stream. But that's, that's later. Now what we're going to do, we're going to use this here. This is called the extraction operator. It's just two greater than signs. Then we enter a, a variable here. X, which is our only variable that exists right now. So what this does here, this allows the user to type in a value for X here. Now the program is going to just terminate right away. If I press 8, it doesn't work here. This cin.get operator does not work when I have called this one here for some reason here. So from here on out, we're going to be using the system pause here. Now watch, watch what happens here. I also want to output. So you have entered X. So uh, let me run this here, then we'll trace it. An integer value. So right here it says enter an integer value here. Then it gets to this statement here. The program is waiting for the user to enter a value. So let's say I press 3. And it says you have pressed, you have entered 3. Then notice right after that 3 it says press any key to continue. That is coming from the system pause here. So I basically I can just press any key. And so I don't see that again. So that's what, how, what happens when you use the system pause. And it'll continue through the rest of the program. So enter an integer value. What if I don't press anything at all? Let's say I just press enter. Whoops. If I just press enter here, nothing happens. It's still waiting for me to enter a value here. So if I press 8, then I'll say you have entered 8 here. So this CIN statement allows the user to enter a value here. So notice right here, when we first trace our code here, when we press the play here, the compiler will first read this right here after reading these three. And uh, it makes a variable x and it sets it equal to 6. Well, regardless, when it gets to this statement here, when it gets to this here, it'll print this out to the screen here. Then it's waiting on the user to enter something for x. Well, regardless of what the value was previously, it'll always output the new incoming value here. But now the the uh, user, whoever is going to use this program here, can type in something silly such as like f. Then it'll say you have entered six. Okay. We'll notice here that it, uh, f was it couldn't put an f into x here. So it just it just kept the initial value here because it didn't 
read that. Because F is kind of a silly character here. So the user can enter all kinds of things. So let's say we did not initialize this here. Because you might, you might have thought of that. Said, hey, I don't even have to initialize this if the user is just going to enter a value here. So we can enter 9 here. And it outputs 9 here. Well, if this is not initialized, the uh, and the and the user decides to enter something silly here, such as like you. It says you have entered a negative blah blah blah, and that that very that value here is just an, a very large negative number that that's set by default when you um when you don't initialize a variable here. So it's always good to initialize your variables to something here. Whether it be negative one or something. And usually a negative one is an indication to me that something didn't go right here. If I entered H here, and it tells me I entered negative one here. I usually do that just just for me to let me know that something probably didn't go right. But we'll we'll go over how to catch errors later on. Okay. So output you have entered X. So just to show you here, let's see I did not initialize this here. Let me get rid of this here. Now I want to output X. And obviously it will output negative one. Then I'll say press any key to continue here. And I want to use this end line here. So when I run this here, this that statement will be on the next line. Well, if I don't initialize this here, the compiler will catch it this time. It'll it'll warn me. It'll say runtime check failure. The variable x is being used without being initialized. Okay, so we're using it. All we're doing is printing it out to the screen here. So we can press continue here. And it'll still run fine. However, it'll just be a random negative value. That's initialized. Now, if we're dividing by zero here, we can have some problems here. And we don't usually want to hit continue. We usually want to hit break. We want to break the this here. But since all we're doing is just printing it out to the screen, nothing's really going on here. If I hit break here, it'll stop here. And I can try to close it. And it causes problems here if you try to close it. My computer froze here. But we can just press play here and it'll go away. And then everything goes back to normal. Okay. Well, I want to go back to that example here. That we used in the last video. And this will be the... This will wrap it up here. So let's say we have enter a dividend and I want that to be the end of the program statement and we're going to input a value for x enter a divisor here. and we'll output Y. Okay. So let's just say we enter some rational values here. Let's say we have uh, 9 and 7. It says the quotient is 1 with the remainder of 2. And that thing, the system pause does get annoying sometimes. So we're going to output an end line at the end here. So we can end the line. We won't have to see that. Enter a dividend here. Let's say we enter 5, 1, 3. Let's say we enter 13. It says the quotient is 39 with a remainder of 6. So we can enter values here in this example here if we want to know the remainder or the dividend of something. Recall the mod operator from the last video. And how um, when you divide integer values here, it'll only truncate the value here. So if we entered a 4 over 3, it'll be um, 
like 1.333 repeating, but it'll cut off all the decimal values and it will not round. <coughs> so let's say, um, let me just show you one example here. Let's say we take 7 divided by 0. <coughs> and the program is going to crash. So we're dividing by 0 here. Let's break out of that. And then we're having all kinds of problems here. So let's try to close it first. The, com the computer is going to freeze for a second here since it's a problem. Dividing by 0 is not good. The computer really has a problem with that. So since we tried to close it here, now we can press the play and it'll work. So that's kind of a little, it's kind of weird. So first you got to try to close it, let your computer freeze for a second, then repress the play and it'll close it again. It'll really close it this time. So we don't want to divide by 0 here. So we might want to default by default here. If I set this to 1 here, and I set this to 3 here, 3 divided by 1 is 3 with a remainder of 0 here. If I decide to enter some silly characters like J and U, mm, oops. if I enter J here, it'll just say, enter a dividend, enter a divisor, and it doesn't give me a chance to enter something else. I can only enter that one time. And it'll say the quotient is 3 with a remainder of 0 here, so it'll automatically use these default values here that we've initialized it to earlier here. So just to keep in, just keep something in mind here, let's initialize this bottom. You should always initialize it to something here, but don't initialize the bottom one to zero here. Otherwise, we'll divide by zero if something goes wrong. Well, we might we can initialize this one to zero here. Zero over anything zero, except for zero divided by zero. So let's say we enter k. Say the quotient is zero with the remainder of zero. So for now, we don't know how to um, block these errors yet. So let's assume that the user is going to enter some rational numbers here. And they are whole numbers here. So we can, <coughs> well, let's just wrap this up. And um, we'll keep on moving on. <coughs>